yes, this is scriptless vanilla subgrid controls for everyone. Hello fellow engineers and welcome back to another video on this channel. Today I would like to show you something many of you were waiting for. And um, this is the scriptless subgrid control. At least it is one first configuration that kind of works pretty good. And this is the base configuration. Um, all this started uh, yeah, a couple of months ago with uh, these little devices. Uh, the right one is a version Hank Jimbo made. The left one is an updated version of mine. And these are WASD controllers supposed to um, control subgrids with an input taken from wheel suspensions. But it turned out they aren't working very reliable uh, due to some issues with uh, speeds above 10 meters per second and uh, some others with gravity. So this was the very first uh, try of, of making a scriptless WASD controller for controlling subgrid thrusters or maybe subgrid wheel suspensions. Uh, since the AI update we are a step further with that and now it uses event controller blocks to grab some input signals that are caused by WASD and additionally now from space and C key and it can translate them or deliver them to an output for subgrid thrusters or any other functional block in space engineers. Now, as I said, this is the base configuration. The red parts are subgrids as you can see here from the hinge on the sides. So this one does come with a sideward thrust on subgrids. I do have a script <laughs> side here to not miss on anything. Yeah, this thing is relatively complex. No, the, the controls are relatively complex and they do need a lot of setups based on how the thr thruster configuration and the thruster angles are and maybe the weight of the grid. But I think everything is solvable with this solution. It is just a lot more work than just putting in a script. But scripts aren't a solution for everyone. So yeah, console players, here we go. There will be more videos about that. I will go on developing this and try to find good solutions for other angles, for other configurations, maybe for subgrid wheel control later. And yeah, like maybe like cranes or something. But this is the baseline. This is uh, to show the principle. I already made a video about that. You will see here. This explains a little more about the controller itself. And there's a bigger version of the controller that also includes mouse movement and mouse clicks. So maybe you can watch this after this video. Also, I am planning on some new content about Starfield when it's uh, released on 1st of September. I'm trying to be day one streamer and I want to do some, some guides and tutorials about that. So yeah, more content for this channel. Also, I am negotiating some partnerships right now for the channel that maybe bring me some reasons for interesting content like gaming hardware and we will see that very soon. So if you don't want to miss on that, uh, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Okay, now let's get into that. So this is the controller and in all shortness, here's how it works. It does contain six iron thrusters, you can see in here, one for each direction of your WASD space and C controls, or if you want so, the same for a gamepad. And the activity of these thrusters is recognized by one of these event controllers. The event controllers do use this input to trigger something else. And in this case, it is one of two timer blocks you can see here. This is needed as some kind of distributor because the event block only can trigger one functional block. And if that functional block is a timer block, we have the option to distribute that over nine output signals. So summarized, if you are pressing A on your keyboard or left on your gamepad, an on-grid ion thruster triggers an event controller, the event controller triggers a timer block and the timer block ignites a subgrid controller for the same direction. 
And with this configuration, the subgrid thrusters work just as with the script. And this actually includes the auto dampeners since they trigger the opposite direction ion thruster, as you can see in this example. Now you might have noticed these two little thrusters on top of the main grid. They are necessary to create a little more of a smooth stop because of the fast timings of the auto dampeners. Not having these little breaks would cause a flickering and a drift like this. Now we have seen these two more configurations in the background. And the reason is this first configuration doesn't make much sense because if we want 90 degrees angled thrusters, we don't need any subgrid. That's why they are here to demonstrate that. This is 45 degrees angled downwards and this has another problem uh, we have to solve because with this configuration we just don't produce sideward thrust but also some upward thrust that is not compensated. So every time we want to strafe sidewards we also get upwards. That's not accurate. Theoretically, I would expect the auto dampeners to compensate that with the upward facing thrusters on the main grid. But for some reason, they don't even react in this situation. And technically, we can accept this behavior if we are aware of it. But still, if we want it to fly straight, this is not ideal. And this is where this configuration comes in with the same amount of thrust in the same angle but the opposite direction. So these two thrusters on each side do compensate the unwanted upward or downward thrust from the other one. Or they are neutralizing each other if you want so. Now let's demonstrate the exact setup by adding forward and backward thrust to the subgrid and key binding them to W and S. So first thing we need is some structure to put the thrust on on both sides. Now with these two we have to get into the cockpit. There we search for the new thrusters, these two. Rename them thruster backward one and thruster backward two. Now we use both of these, turn them off and put the override to maximum. Now we have to look for our timer blocks. We have one for trigger, setup actions. Now we search for our two backward thrusters and trigger both to on. The other one for stopping it is release and toggle them off. And at the event controller, we can see at 20% thrust on the ion thruster for W, on the main grid, this triggers the W trigger timer block. And if the key is released, so the ion thruster turns off, it falls back on release function W, which is the second to turn off the thrusters on the subgrid. Now pretty much the same with the forward facing thrusters. And back in the cockpit, we rename them as thruster forward one and two. Again, toggle block off, thruster override to max. And we look for the trigger block for S, setup actions, toggle thruster forward one and two on. And for the release timer, we use toggle thruster off. And again, this works just fine. Now here's a final test and as intended everything works including the auto dampeners and if I release the keyboard it automatically stops. Now some people still might ask what is this good for? So I choose two of my own builds to demonstrate that and a third one made by Allied Armor to show what can this lead to next. Now, if we look at the Argo Mole here, this already comes with the most common subgrid thruster configuration that you will find on the workshop. And that is to have some nice looking angled engine nestles. 
And in that case, it is just about the forward and backward thrust, which means you just need two of the event controllers and their configuration to control them. Pretty much the same here with the Spirit E1 that does have its main thrust in the wings. Now for these two builds, this solution already makes them usable on console or scriptless servers. And ships like the Starfield Frontier by Allied Armor with its vector thrust might benefit even more from this solution. Because the shown device is not limited to subgrid thruster control. Theoretically, the options to let functional blocks react from your keyboard input are endless and just a question of the right settings and some additional mechanical solutions. So yes, I am already working on a concept to make VTOL work scriptless. More about that in one of my next videos about this topic. For today, I believe this is enough for you to digest. And if this video gave you some useful information, please like and share it, leave a comment, but most important, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support it. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.